Hello, and welcome back to the busy town of Hathaway. Just ignore all of the forest fires and the not enough customers icons. What really matters is Hathaway's economy, and it's doing pretty well. We're getting loads of tax revenues from our office zones, although we should lower the tax rate for our commercial. Give them a little tax break. In this episode, I want to expand Hathaway to the north and build an industrial park so that we can move our industry out of the center of town. Returning to the real world example of Summerstown, we can see our industry right next door to our residential and I don't think we want to do that. That looks terrible. Imagine all the heavy truck traffic driving in front of your house. No, instead, let's go further down the 401 to Boundary Road on the outskirts of Cornwall. Here we can see a number of large warehouses and logistics centers clustered right off Boundary Road up near the 401 with smaller warehouses and factories located a little further away. So we'll put our industrial park up here. Again, just ignore the forest fires and the fact that I forgot to zoom back out after looking at the Google map. But the first thing I want to do is extend the railroad down this way and put in a cargo train terminal. I'll start by extending this trench a little further so that we can make the tunnel under the highway as short as possible. I will have to turn off the Anarchy mod so that I can't get away with atrocities like this. Although, to be able to do this without the Anarchy mod, I will have to buy these map tiles. And yeah, that was a tornado, but don't worry about it. So the idea here is to extend the railroad straight ahead underneath the highway on and off ramps at a slope of less than 2% without it becoming a tunnel until right before it goes under the highway. And forgetting for a minute that the Move It mod exists and that I have it, I decided that the best way to do this would be to lower the terrain and then raise it back up around the tracks when I'm done. I guess that looks all right. On the other side, I decide to lower the terrain where I want the tunnel to end and the train tracks to come back above ground. This allows me to reduce the slope of the tracks. Now I'll simply stretch these tracks straight across the map and have it rejoin the tracks on the other side. I need to build this bridge just high enough to go over both the river and the highway. But not too high because then there'll be too great of a slope when it comes back down to meet the tracks on the other side. Now the only reason I can do this without building a train depot first is that I have the historical start mod. That's what allowed me to build farms so early on in the history of Hathaway. But again, I realize that I'll need to disable anarchy so that I can't get away with stuff like this or this. I gotta make sure these train tracks are properly connected. So once again, I'll have to use up an expansion permit on this random map tile all the way over here that I probably won't touch again for a while. That connection is looking pretty smooth though. 
Now I'll buy these map tiles for our industrial park. Yeah, another forest fire. Just ignore it. I'll take these map tiles as well. Thank you very much. And nestle our cargo train station right up against these trees. I'm trying to leave as much old growth forest intact as I can. But I did forget to level the terrain first, so I'll move it back out of the way for a minute and take care of that. Now our cargo train terminal is in place and connected to the main line. And I can start building the road network around it. There we go. I'll make a few more changes as we go, but that's a good start. I would love to put in this vehicle factory right now, but I don't think my city can sustain that large an industry just yet. Instead, I'll use some of my development points to unlock some of the heftier city service buildings, like the post sorting facility, and the server farm. So here we've got our landfill, which I plan to further expand in the future, our recycling center. Then leaving some space for a potential future vehicle factory, I dragged the road maintenance depot out here and added a server farm, a post sorting facility, and a small coal power plant down here. Although I will have to connect this to power and water. Ooh, look, a train. Again, just ignore the forest fires. So I tried to place the roads in such a way as to make turns easier for the trucks, but actually it seems to have backfired. One way to achieve the same effect is to extend this road just a little bit. Add a small roundabout here. Then I'll just create an extra node in this road so that I can delete this bit. And now I need to turn off all snapping, except maybe 90 degrees, and extend it not all the way in, but just until it connects to the roundabout. Then delete this extra bit of road and the roundabout. And you've got a slightly extended intersection. Yes, there is also the Move It mod. To manipulate road segments, hit Alt-M, and then you can grab these nodes and drag them out as far as you like in order to widen the intersection. So I went ahead and did this to every single intersection in the Hathaway Industrial Park including where our main industrial road, which is called the Cypress Highway for now, intersects with Glengarry Road. Here, Glengarry Road is a dual carriageway as it approaches Highway 401. I'll just drag this node just a little further to get rid of this lane marking in the middle of the intersection. Now, I want to use the Find It mod to add some of these warehouses and storage warehouses, but because they're not standalone buildings, because they're intended as upgrades for other buildings, you can't turn them on their own. What you have to do is first orient one of the buildings that it might be attached to the way that you want it. In fact, any building that has upgrades will do for this purpose. Just get that oriented the way that you want it. You don't even actually have to plop it down. And then these buildings, which are intended as upgrades, will be oriented the same way, and you can place them however you want.
Next, I'll start filling in some of these gaps with 6x6 industrial manufacturing. Although companies don't seem too eager to move in just yet. Jeez, another forest fire. I'll just be sure to zone these properly so they don't disappear if I want to play without the Plop the Growables mod. Next up is 6x6 office zoning. I'll put some of these right next to the industrial zones and some of them on their own. We then have 4x5 and 3x5 industrial buildings. And it looks like it's only the offices that are getting any interest so far, despite the lower demand. Hmm, citizen happiness seems to have taken a dip. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, the, the taxes are kind of high. Vicinity of the deceased penalty. Yeah, I, I guess I should probably build a cemetery. But why is the population dropping? Oh my, oh my god. What? The entire town is on fire. The entire town is on fire and 387 people are dead. So far, the game is on pause. I didn't realize this level of destruction was even possible in this game. Like, tornadoes don't do this. I, I don't know what to do. I gotta get this under control. Maybe some, maybe unlock some fire services. Let's get a, a full-size fire station in here and increase our budget for fire and rescue to the max. Okay, I've unpaused the game and there is just fire and dead bodies everywhere and this billowing black smoke like what were these people storing in their house gasoline old tires the death toll just continues to climb and climb as the fire spreads and i really don't know what to do I mean, I could cheat. I could just go back and load a save game or just preemptively demolish and delete everything before it catches fire. But I'm genuinely in awe of the level of destruction here. The traffic jam is just fire trucks and hearses that can't get where they need to go. And this billowing black smoke that's just destroying my frame rate. The number of casualties just just keeps climbing. The high school has already burnt down and now the elementary school is on fire. And nobody has water, so the water pumping station must be on fire too. Yeah. The number of casualties is n now approaching 800. And I can't believe the scale of the destruction here. If it was a forest fire that started all of this, maybe we should install a, a fire watch tower. And maybe a firefighting helicopter depot. The tower can go here on the side of this hill at the edge of the forest. And as the firefighting helicopter does its thing, we'll check the casualty count once again. And, and we're at 833. And with most of the fires out, we can start rebuilding. We've rebuilt the high school and now we'll rebuild the elementary school where 53 people died in the fire and they're still waiting for a hearse. But more importantly, our booming economy has been destroyed. And we'll have to just lower the budget for everything. 
while at the same time lowering taxes to try to bring back some of the residents who fled the city. The medical clinic seems to have survived the inferno, but not the police station or the old firehouse. These, these figures are just disastrous, and of course, half the town is still waiting for a hearse. Will Hathaway be able to survive this? I, I don't know. Again, I could just go back and load a save game, but that would feel like cheating. I honestly want to see if we can pull through this. And I often end these videos by saying free Palestine. So I think it's worth mentioning that what we've seen here today is just a small taste of the kind of horrors that Palestinians have been going through for the past seven months, or rather 76 years of occupation. I mean, it's not a natural disaster, it's a genocide. So yeah, as always, thank you for watching, and of course, free Palestine.